Whenever the price of oil roars higher, investors tend to freak out about the cruise lines. As fuel is one of their largest costs, and they're also concerned about the overcapacity in the industry, too. But you know what? There is so much more to these stories. Take Carnival Corporation, CCL, the world's largest cruise line. Under the leadership of CEO Arnold Donald, Carnival has undergone one of the most remarkable turnarounds I've ever seen. And it has to do with execution and awareness. And these issues are much deeper and more positive than any concerns involving fuel or overcapacity. Now, earlier today, we got a chance to check in with Arnold Donald on one of his ships, the Horizon. Take a look. Arnold, it has been almost five years. How has this industry changed, and how have you changed this company? Well, first of all, I want to welcome you aboard the beautiful Carnival Horizon. Thank you. Uh, we've got a little acknowledgement here for Mad Money on the big screen. Can't which, beat that which biggest Which you ever. absolutely deserve. <laughs> thank so thank you. you for being on board. This is our newest ship in the Carnival fleet, and we're very excited about her. And as you know, the naming is occurring. Uh, later today. Right. So in any event, uh, five years. It's been five years. Man, it seems like only one, to be honest with you. But it's been a fantastic five years. The industry's changed a good little bit. We've gone from languishing in the stock market, as you know, and languishing in performance as an industry to really outperforming as an industry. And of course, um, we think we've had a lot to do with that here at the Carnival Corporation. Well, so we've more than doubled earnings, more than doubled um, our return on investment capital and more than doubled our share price in, in the last five well, years. Well, I'm glad you brought it up because this is a chance for our viewers to get in. I've always waited until we get a 3% <laughs> yield. It's never down there. It's always been at the high every time we talk. This is a, the best value I have ever seen, and they're misperceptions. I think they're, let's just check them off. Mm -hmm. People feel that uh, the rates haven't stayed the same. Uh, they've been going down. Totally wrong, no, right? No, totally wrong. No, our yields are going up. They've been going up every year. They're going up again this year, as we've um, shared in our last quarterly earnings report. And uh, so race yields are good because we've created more demand than there is capacity. And that's what our job is. And because we exceed our guest expectations, whether it's on Carnival or any one of our other nine world leading cruise line brands. The uh, demand that you've created, people don't understand. When I first met you, you said, you know what, we're going to do some original TV programming. <laughs> and I said, wow, I mean, good luck with that. How's that working? It's working great. You know, we now have five um, TV programs that we produce in the U.S. We also have two in the U.K., and we have some activity in Italy as well. But the five shows um, on, on several networks and cable, and we have our own digital network, Ocean View, um, which people can download, and we have additional digital um, streaming, uh, you know, viewing opportunities uh, for folks on that. People are all caught up on Wall Street about the idea that there's some of your compadres have taken on, added too many ships. You said famously, a cruise is not a cruise is not a cruise. Explain that. Well, you're right now on the Carnival Horizon, and this is um, our Carnival brand. You know, Shaquille O'Neal is the CFO, the right, chief, chief fund, fund officer. officer. And so this is a very social brand where everybody on board wants to party and and engage and socialize with each other. If you take Seabourn, our ultra luxury you know, cruise line, that one's very different. Everybody there wants to be pampered and right. they want adventures, but it's, it's a, a different kind of an experience. And each brand is very different. And all the other lines that we don't own are also different. So a, a lots of different differentiation across the various brands. The share price, uh is something that you obviously must think is very cheap. You've been a gigantic <laughs> buyer of your own shares right here. Yeah, yeah. Well, we've been able to return through dividends, right. you know, several billions of dollars over the last, you know, five years, and then of course through stock buyback, we've per, you know bought back over three billion dollars worth of our own uh, shares, and we'll continue to do that on an opportunistic basis. On the conference call, a lot of talk about Eastern Caribbean not doing up to the expectations, but that's not really. What drives your business? It's a small part of it. You know, look, we go to 700 ports around the world. Uh, even in the Caribbean, while people are saying Eastern Caribbean is not meeting expectations, the Eastern Caribbean is up over the prior year. So it's still a better year. And the Eastern Caribbean, our ships are full and people are having a great time you know, going to the Eastern Caribbean. But of course, we go to the Western Caribbean and the Southern Caribbean and we go to the Mediterranean and we go to Antarctica and we go to Alaska and, you know, we're all over the place, the Baltic. So when you think of all the dispersed um, areas of the world you can visit, we have 105 ships, thousands of itineraries. Um, any one market is a small piece, but the Eastern Caribbean is actually doing better than it did last year. Now, uh, when we 
last talk, China was an idea, okay? <laughs> China's much more than an idea now, right? Yeah, well, China someday will be the largest cruise market in the world. It's in their five-year plan. So if, it's in, if cruising is in their five-year plan or anything that's in their five-year plans, they're going to make it happen. And so we just want to be a part of that. And we partnered, as you know, with CSSC and the Sovereign Front, CIC, to establish a domestic cruise line there and uh, to build the first ship in a Chinese shipyard. And so that's in 2023. Meanwhile, we have a number of ships home ported there, and our ships are, are doing well. It's a challenging market, but it's embryonic. We are teeny tiny in terms of accessing a total number of uh, travelers that are from China. Uh, one of the bears tells me everyone who's going to take a cruise has taken one, but I think it's kind of <laughs> underpenetrated. Every market in the world, Jim, is underpenetrated, including the United States. All the cabins in the world add up to less than 2% of the hotel rooms. Less than 2%. One of every two people who cruise, cruise on one of our nine World Union Cruise Line brands. So our competition, as I've told you before, is actually land-based vacations. It's not other cruise lines. And because we're chasing the other 98%, not the 1% we don't have of the 2% penetration. My, my daughter takes a cruise. Why? Because of Instagram. Millennials, <laughs> right? They love the backdrop. I mean, that backdrop, but isn't it something? Yeah, look, millennials, um, boomers, Gen Xers, they all love cruising. But millennials do over-index on cruising, primarily like your daughter, because they're more interested in experience than they are in things. And cruise is all about experience and the human spirit. Now let's deal with uh, the numbers. Strong pricing, uh, lower costs, yeah. and big onboard spending. Yeah, well, onboard spending, of course, people say, well, what else can you sell people? We don't want to sell anybody anything, okay? okay. What we want to do is understand what they want. They're on vacation. If you right. give them what they want, they'll buy it. So our challenge is just to understand what people really want and make it available to them. So we just make things available. And onboard spending in the 45-year history of this company, onboard spending has increased every year except one. No matter what the economy was, what else was going on, onboard spending has increased and it'll continue to increase in the future. Well, some of that is because you've embraced technology. I yeah. know that you, that you actually addressed the Consumer Electronics Show, yeah. and you have a, a medallion system that makes it so it kind of anticipates what you want. Yeah, absolutely. We were fortunate enough to give the keynote at the Consumer Electronics Show a year ago, mm -hmm. and um, we did that off our Ocean platform, which features the Ocean medallion. It's a little uh, device that you can carry in your pocket, put on a necklace, put on a, a wristband or whatever, and it's like a license plate. It identifies you, and then it makes your experience customized for you. You go up to a bar, the bartender knows your name, knows what drink you have. You order the drink, somebody sees the whale, you're in Alaska, someone sees the whale off the bow of the ship. You go out to see the whale, the drink will come to you. So it's a very customized, personalized experience. And in the end, that's what people today are looking for. Well, it sounds like that you, uh, like many of the more forward-thinking uh, CEOs, have embraced big data. Yeah, well, big data is a part of it, right. but this is almost now moving to that other thing everybody talks about, machine intelligence and artificial intelligence, because it's a learning system that looks across a population and is able to predict what you may want next. Right now, it's um, being introduced on our Princess brand. Uh, that's the one we're leading with. And all of our other brands, including Carnival, are experimenting with other technologies. But we're not about technologies. We're about hospitality. So all these technologies are intended to enhance the guest experience because we have one job our job is to exceed guest expectations well you sure do that i want to thank you so much that's arnold donnelly's the president and ceo of carnival corp thank you so much sir thank you yeah we appreciate it booyah jim kramer here from mad money thanks for watching cnbc on youtube click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with ceos plus market news investing advice and a whole lot more